This is Slip Angle, an advanced driving technique that blends both grip and drift. It was used by Takumi in the show Initial D, and ever since then this technique has almost had an air of mystery surrounding it. I've received tens of comments telling me to look into Slip Angle in more depth since I made my Grip vs Drift video. So here we are. Ask and thou shall receive guys. So make sure you keep watching until the end if you want to become a driving god. So what is Slip Angle? Slip angle is a measurement of how much the tyre's contact patch has twisted in relation to the wheel. If we take a look at this example, we can see that the body of the car is pointed in a different direction to the way the vehicle is driving. This is because slip angle is rotating the car without any steering input, thus the car rotates faster and it can take a faster line. If we weren't using slip angle to take this corner, we wouldn't be able to follow the inner radius all the way around and thus we will be slower. Slip angle helps you rotate the car quicker and follow the fastest line. Now there are a bunch of diagrams and mathematic equations to explain this to you, but I'm going to show you what slip angle is and how to use it in a very easy to digest package. If we take a look at a car utilizing slip angle in slow motion, we can see that the front tires are directly on the inner radius of the corner, but the rear tires are about a foot away from said radius. This is the easiest way to spot slip angle. If the rear tires are farther away from the inside of the corner than the front, that is most likely slip angle. If you go back and watch your fastest lap times or toge runs, I can almost guarantee that at least some slip angle was used. Now this may be very counterintuitive to most sim racers, as sliding is usually slower and degrades the tyres massively, but to get around the corner as fast as possible, you actually have to engage in a slight bit of oversteer. We can see this done in the top flight of motorsport Formula 1 at every single corner by every single driver. It's almost like drifting, however it is very subtle, faster and less stylish. Whereas drifting is all about braking traction, slip angle is produced on the very limit as this is where the tyres are at their grippiest. Newer drivers may have been taught that sliding is bad and that is why slip angle is so counterintuitive. But sliding slightly is much faster than cornering well within the limits of the tyres. I know, I know, you're now wondering how to do it, and that is what's coming up next, so make sure you stay tuned. But before that I want to let you know that only 10% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed, so if you find this video helpful or entertaining, please feel free to hit that big red button. Thank you. So I found the easiest way to use slip angle and to become a faster driver is to really visualize what is happening with your car as you drive it. Those with natural talent may already do this, but for others it may be harder. You need to visualize what the tires are doing as you turn, throttle and brake. As you approach the corner under throttle, all four tires are equally distributing the weight to the tarmac. Everything is perfectly balanced. However, once you let off the throttle and brake, the weight of the car will shift to the front tyres. This means that your rear tyres are lifted off of the ground slightly and they have much less contact with the tarmac than they usually would have. Thus, the front tyres have more grip and the rears have a lot less than usual. As you turn in still off the throttle and the weight of the car on the front tyres, you'll find the front of the car wants to grip more than the rear and naturally the rear will want to slide and enter the state of slip angle thus giving the car the ability to rotate faster than it could if all four tyres were gripping equally. As you proceed through the corner, you'll soon need to hit the throttle again. If you throttle too aggressively here, you risk the weight being pulled to the rear tyres and you'll understeer and wash out of the corner. So you need to feather the throttle and find the right amount for the car you are using. The hardest part here of course is not overdoing it and entering an actual drift or even spinning out. Ideally, you should be able to keep the steering wheel straight, however, if you find that you need to counter steer at the end of the corner, I've found that this doesn't cost much time. You should also be able to just step on the throttle through the whole corner, although some feathering is needed. As with everything in life, it's all about balance. I recommend anyone to pick a car and to stick with it, be it for toge or racing. If you switch cars a lot, you'll never find the perfect balance for the vehicle, so stick to one car and get proficient at it. So to recap, you need to put the weight of the car onto the front axle. You turn in and the rear of the car will naturally step out. Now you just need to balance the car on the throttle and make sure you don't straighten up or enter oversteer. 
Once again, this will take a lot of practice. Hopefully this all made sense. I never think my explanations do until I upload it and a bunch of people find them helpful. So if you did find this video helpful and you learned a little bit more about this elusive driving technique, please make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. It really helps the channel out and you'll get to see more of my videos and tutorials. Anyway, remember to drop a comment on any more topics you'd like to see me cover and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.